Hello, this is Dr. David Green, CEO of the Arizona Pain Network, where we bring you anything and everything educational for pain management. Today the topic is the basics of migraine headaches. Well, a migraine is a chronic headache that affects people from a few hours up to 72 hours straight. It's a complicated recurrent headache disorder, and it's most common in women and those between the ages of 15 and 55, and typically they become less severe and less frequent with age. Well, how common are they? About 18% of women are affected and 8% of men. 30 million in the U.S. have at least one migraine each year. Every 10 seconds, someone in the U.S. ends up in the emergency room with a migraine headache. 70% have a first-degree relative who suffers. If one parent has migraines, there's a 40% chance a child will suffer. And if both parents have migraines, the chances go up to 90%. And more than 90% of those suffering with migraines are unable to work or function normally during the headache. There's a lot we don't know about what causes migraines. We do know that there is a genetic component and that there's some environmental reasons as well. It's thought that it's due to imbalances in brain chemicals. We know that serotonin levels do drop during migraines. Low serotonin can trigger a migraine by letting too much blood flow through vessels that should be actually constricted. So it can induce a throbbing sensation. Typical migraine triggers, there's quite a few. Foods may include aged cheese or red wine, and those both have tyramine in them. Beer, whiskey, food additives such as nitrates, cold foods, citrus fruits, MSG, and even caffeine. Elevated stress levels or weather changes, such as barometric changes, uh, strong scents, such as those in perfume or paint, even hair accessories, such as pulling your hair tight in a ponytail, may start a migraine. Um, exercise, poor posture, skipping meals, smoking, all kinds of things that can trigger a migraine. Actually, one that is a myth is chocolate. There's no evidence to clearly substantiate that chocolate is a trigger. So, good news there. Symptoms of migraines, it's often a unilateral head pain that is throbbing and aggravated by activity. 20% of people have an aura, which is a uh, set of symptoms before the actual migraine comes on. And that may include photophobia, which is uh, light sensitivity, or, or visual scintillations. 80% of those with migraines have no aura at all. Diagnosing migraines is a little bit tough because there's no objective criteria available. A CT or MRI scan can rule out badness, such as a tumor that may cause similar symptoms. A lot of it comes down to patient history and pattern of symptoms, so a migraine diary can be very helpful. Uh, the International Headache Society requires patients to have at least five attacks, fulfilling three criteria. One is that it's either uh, between a four and a 72 hour duration, and at least two of these, unilateral, pulsating, moderate to severe pain intensity, and aggravation by or causing avoidance of routine physical activity, and then at least one of these, nausea and or vomiting, and photophobia and phonophobia. Abortive treatment options, um, those are the ones that where you already have the migraine and the objective is to try and make the pain go away. Um, and this comes down medication-wise to the triptans, and that targets serotonin. The most common ones are Relpax and Imitrex. Uh, you see on the right, um, Sumatriptan, which is Imitrex. And then there's quite a few others. They're all in the same family, though. Additional options include Midrin um, or Megranol nasal spray, such as you see on the right, Cafergo, and then over-the-counter medications such as Advil migraine, Excedrin migraine, and Motrin migraine. Additional treatments may include narcotic medications, barbiturates, nausea medications such as Reglan, Compazine, or Phenergan. When it comes to preventive treatment options, the objective is to lessen the frequency and severity of migraines. High blood pressure medications, including beta blockers and calcium channel blockers, can be helpful. Antidepressants or anti-seizure medications can also help a lot with prevention. And then piezotifen is a serotonin agonist that can help. There are various interventional treatments, such as uh, Botox, that are indicated for migraines. Botox is FDA approved. It's given at three-month intervals. 
It's a 10-minute procedure that includes 32 injection sites. It is covered if certain medications have been tried and failed. For chronic migraines, um, distinct and severe neurologic disorder characterized by patients who have a history of migraines and suffer from headaches on 15 or more days per month with headaches that are four, day, four hours a day or longer. So you really do have to have chronic migraines. The results were actually very good. Uh, patients treated with Botox average eight to nine fewer headache days per month compared to baseline in a very large study. Additional interventional treatments may include occipital nerve blocks, which is a simple outpatient procedure, cervical facet or epidural injections, sphenopalatine ganglion blocks, supratrochlear nerve blocks, supra or infraorbital nerve blocks, and pulsed radio frequency of occipital nerves. So there was a study of 100 patients who received greater occipital nerve blocks and over half achieved pain relief um, for three weeks and then it could be repeated. Another study, there was a retrospective study on the effectiveness of greater occipital nerve block in those with refractory migraines and using lidocaine and steroid um, and over half, once again, had s significant results that lasted up to six months. Another study Caputo and Ferretto did, it looked at the benefits of peripheral nerve blocks in treating migraines. They looked at 27 patients before and after the occipital and supraorbital nerve blocks, um, and there was an 85% effectiveness rate for six months, so very good outcomes. The top headache pain clinics in Arizona is Arizona Pain Specialists. They really are a comprehensive pain management one-stop shop with board-certified pain doctors, chiropractors. They also offer acupuncture, which can be helpful for migraines, spinal decompression therapy, physical rehab. There are several locations offering over 50 treatments, accepting over 50 insurances. They've won the Patient's Choice Award five years in a row. The number to call for scheduling is 602-507-6550, and the website is preferredpaincenter.com. I'm Dr. David Green with the Arizona Pain Network. Your pain stops here.